Hey, how we doing, folks? Paul Source Jr. here, and I'm currently on the Minecraft SMP server and about to get started on my Hobbit Hole project right here in this little hill. And we've got, uh, let's see, we've got Vintage Beef and Mick Gollum just joined us shortly, and he's asking about uh, duplicating books, which I think there is something new about duplicating books in Minecraft, one of the more recent updates. I could be wrong, so... Anyway, he's uh, he's going to play around with that while I get indoors because the weather outside is frightful. But the company's delightful. Da -na 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 -na. Perfectly appropriate right now with the holidays upon us. Oh, get out of the rain, man. All right, so I'm thinking right here we're going to dig a little door out and we'll, uh, we'll make our hobbit hole right from this and going back that way. It looks like I'm going to have a rainy front stoop, however. Well... I guess there's nothing I can do about that, but I'm going to... Well, if we dig back enough, we should be okay. I'm going to put the front door here. I'm going to have to get rid of this um, cactus. I'm not sure who that belongs to, but it's going to have to go. All right. Now, before I really get started, let's talk about... Uh, let me show you some of the stuff that I did on my own off camera. I gathered up a bunch of wood, gathered up some stone, made some glass and an assortment of tools. It looks like I'm already going to need a new shovel. So let's go ahead and do that. I actually found a little bit of iron as well. I'm trying to do this on my own legitimately. I do have a bunch of tools and things that have been given to me as gifts from all the other uh, Minecrafters. Some of them anyway, and some to credit where they... Uh, uh, and I won't mention any names, but he's going to get his soon enough. But someone took credit for someone else's gift. Silly boy. And I think that's enough for now. So um, I'm going to try to do it legitimately survival style if I can, at least for a little bit until I have to do more fancy stuff. You know what? I'm going to have to supplement some of this up here because I need a good front. I need a good front roof. And this, this hill's a little on shape, so I'm going to have to go up here. Now, I have never made a hobbit hole before, so I'm really not sure how this is going to come out, but <laughs> we shall see. Something I wanted to do in Minecraft for a while, and I do believe it is time. All right, why don't we just we'll just make it right on this level. I guess that cactus can stay for the time being, but I'll have a pathway leading up to the main, the main drag over there. But for our front, we're just going to pile right through here. And I think I'd like to have a window over here. I think they have some of them have windows on the outside. But the doors are typically kind of, uh, well, they're, some are double doors, some are single doors doors it's basically just a hole right into the ground I should have paid more attention during um, the Hobbit movie which I saw last weekend I spent a lot of time in Bilbo's Hobbit hole and all right I, w I don't want it too high either because Hobbits are short right and we don't need a lot of headroom So let's just get inside here and see how much space we have to work with. I don't want to have to pop out. I don't want to pop out of the side accidentally. So today is the uh, the end of the world. It's December twelfth, uh, December twenty first, two thousand twelve, and uh, it's the Mayan apocalypse. Which apparently, some people believe the Mayans predicted this based on their calendar. One of their calendars. And I don't know if you recall, but in an old episode, and it wasn't uh, it wasn't on Minecraft, but an episode that I did, hmm, on my channel, and I can't remember exactly what series it was. Okay, let's do this. It's just going to be the front. Pick up a glass here, right? And I don't have the double doors. Okay. I talked about how I studied um, Mayan culture. 
trying to remember what series that was and why was I talking. Oh, oh, it was my uh, Paul Plays Minecraft, of course, because I found the ruin. Nah. No. Because that would be a great idea if you could duplicate books. Um, yeah, because I found the jungle ruin, which reminded me of a Mayan ruin, so I was going to do like a Mayan theme. So anyway, the point is that um, I did study some of that in college. Um, anthropology and archaeology, and that was kind of my, my thing for a little while until I switched to... Uh, oh boy, I switched a lot of times to many different things, in fact. Hmm, how's that? Okay. But if I recall, Mayans had more than one calendar, and they had this one called the long count or something and that's the one that everybody's all freaking out about but the calendars my calendars are actually cyclical just like ours you know there's x number of days and then it starts over again you know it resets so there's a beginning and then there's an end and i don't recall that they actually ever predicted the end of the world just the calendar ended. It doesn't... I, I think it was more like a, they're just counting days down because the, that's what you do with a calendar, right? Now, I'm going to need more dirt over here because this is going to have to go back. Yeah, this hill is just not wide enough. Oh, lightning strike. So let's put some dirt over here. So I'm sure some of the Mayan experts... Are arguing that fact right now today and obviously we're all still here so um, even if they had predicted it apparently they was wrong and let me get some more dirt for this kind of wanted to have it inside the hill and the overhang will be I'll make like a a wood and uh, a stone overhang I know I'm going to back into this cactus, and I'm going to get a butt full of thorns, but... I see you, Joe. Um, that's good enough for now. All right, so why don't we do that? Let's see. I've got um, eight stone stairs. Now, the calendar was something like, if I recall, uh, 500 years or something like that. So that's why they call it like they call it the long count calendar because it was, you know, long. <laughs> um, all right, I'm not sure how this is going to pan out, but All right, I'm thinking uh, this has got to come down just a little. Oops. So, yeah, so this calendar goes, like, you know, 400 years or something, and then it resets. So if you talk to the, some of the experts now, they're saying, well, this is just a new beginning for us. This isn't the end of the world. And that's apparently true. You know, I was thinking maybe I was going to wake up and find zombies out in the streets or something, and I thought, hey, no, that'd be pretty cool. And then I thought, nah. You know what? I've seen The Walking Dead. That ain't cool. <laughs> it might be cool for a couple of days. You know, when you have to rush out to Walmart and stock up on guns and ammo, food, batteries, and all that stuff. And you're going to be brawling with everybody there trying to get that stuff safely. Without being trampled or shot or killed. And then you think about Rick and his troop in season, what are they, in season three right now, and how lean and mean life is. Of course, it's brutal in all the seasons, but finding food and water would be a serious issue once all the utilities, you know, fresh water in particular, once everything stopped, as far as utilities go, you was on your own, man. And the food's going to run out sooner or later. In fact, if you have ever seen The Road or read the book, that's how bleak things would really become after a short period of time. 
once those resources run out. I'm not a yeah, I'm not a big doomsday prophet guy or, or preparer or anything like that, but it's something I think about um, occasionally just to be prepared for you know minor disasters because there's tidal waves and there's blizzards and there's things that can cause you some pain and sorrow and you just want to be at least I do anyway kind of want to have uh, what's called like a bug out bag or a bug out box or something like that so you have 24 hour to 72 hour um, Tucker Tote or a couple of those just ready to go with the amenities that you need, things that you need to survive for a couple of days on and keep yourself, uh, not just survive but also to be comforted because it's going to, it would be extremely stressful if something like that happens yeah, especially if you have kids you know, you want to have things that they're familiar with and toys um games etc come here guys all right so i'm trying to just make this like i hope i don't pop out here all right good i'm not popping out no popping out today whoops sort of um roundish you know like it's a hole and i think that may suffice let's see Can't do a round front, but I can do a round side here. Again, I don't know how large this place is going to be, but all right, dirt, you can get out of there. Now, I did hear about a lot of crazy people doing wacky stuff, expecting the end of the world. Like, hey, you know what? Heck, the heck, I mean, it's my last day on Earth. Let's go crazy. All right, now most hobbit holes are pretty narrow, aren't they? Um, so I don't want the floor here, the hallways to be too wide. I'm thinking three is probably going to be the widest, and I don't know what I'm going to do with the floor yet. The stone actually doesn't look too bad, but I think uh, I think this is about far enough over here. So why don't we? I'm going to have to get more spruce wood, too. Oh, there's the grass. So this is about as far as I can go anyway on this side. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Did not pop out here, either. Having a lot of luck with not popping out. Popping out bad. Staying in. Good. I guess we'll do that. Yeah, we got a ton of rain over here right now, too. It's unfortunate, because if it were a little bit colder, we'd be getting snow. It might have a white Christmas next week. All right, how about that? Let's get We're going to have to get rid of that dirt, obviously. Thinking like that. And then we're going to put another beam here. Aye. All right, let's get the bow out of the hand. I don't think I'm going to be attacked in my hobbit hole. And if I am, my two arrows probably aren't going to help me much. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right, that's cool. And then, uh, ah, imagine that. That looks okay, actually, surprisingly enough. So, did you guys happen to see The Hobbit? And if you did, what did you think? I liked it. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but I will say that I liked it. I thought uh, it was pretty well done. I really like the additions that um, that uh, Jackson put in. That didn't need to be there. That weren't necessarily in the book, but it was a good idea to put them in for people that have uh, never read the book. So I did read The Hobbit too, and I finished it off. Well, then now we, of course we have to wait. I don't know. I guess every for the next two years. It's three total installments in this movie now. So, <laughs> gotta wait another year for part two and then another year for part three. In a way, I'm happy that Jackson's doing that because that way he can put more time and effort into telling the full story. And, uh, you know, it's I'm sure it's gonna be 
I'm sure there's there's monetary motivations behind that decision, but I think in the long run, if you're a Hobbit fan, a Lord of the Rings fan, or Tolkien fan, then it's going to pay off in the long run. But I started reading um, George Martin's fifth book in the uh, of I the Ice and Fire of of Ice and Fire series, which is like uh, the Game of Thrones, which you may be more familiar with if you're. Uh, a fan of the show. And I have seen the first uh, the first season of that, and, but I have not seen the second season, which I, as far as I know, it's done. I'm just waiting for the DVDs to come out, and then I want to... Um, then I'll buy it. Because I don't get HBO, or at least I didn't have HBO when it was playing. But I do have it now. A little too late. But I figured I'll just wait for the DVDs. There we go, that's Hobbitish. Kind of like a tunnel. Might be a little too wide, but... No, no. Maybe not. Maybe not. And I think over here what we'll do... Is get some wool. Some white wool. And I'll have these, like, cross beams here or something. And then I'll fill all this with wool, but I don't have any wool, so... I can't do that right now. Let's just keep digging, I guess. So anyway, I was reading this book, the this, the fifth book, A Dance with Dragons, and uh, I got it on Kindle. It was late at night last night, and I'm lying in bed, it's nice and cozy and warm. It was about 12.30 a.m. My wife is asleep, and um, I'm reading this book, just got started, and I hear this rapping sound a rapid kind of rapping not too loud but loud enough to make me think that somebody's hitting something somewhere because that's what, it sounded like like if you can hear this like that like a knock but not quite a knock it was more like at least my first impression was one of the kids is moving around in his bed and banged into something and that's, at first, that's what I thought. So I just wrote it off as, ah, it's a kid, you know. It happens. And how far do I want to go here? i got to turn eventually. So I paid really no, no attention, no heed to it. And then about, oh, I don't know, 10 minutes go by, 15 minutes, and it happens again. Now, my head is right next to a window. Um, I'm back against the wall with a window to my right. Um, you know, so if I turn around and look out, I can see out the window. I'm up on the second floor. Um, and it sounded to me like it came from that direction. So the second time I heard it, I'm like, okay. That's, that's definitely somebody moving around. I thought, well, maybe it's just my son getting up to go to the bathroom or something or... Or maybe it's the dog, because sometimes the dog gets stuck in in his room, and uh, when she wants to get out, she scratches at the door. So, you know, he's, of course, asleep, and I go over and let the dog out. I think I'm going to turn... Wait a minute, how much space do I have over here? Not a lot. Um, shoot. So I just thought, uh, once again, the second time, like, well, it, it's it's got to be one of the kids. I mean, what else could it possibly be? Now it's like, you know, quarter of one or something. Somebody's just moving around. Can't be anybody outside, right? So I just let it go. And then I hear it again. 10, 15 minutes go by, and I hear this kind of rapping sound. And it sounds, sounds a little, like, urgent. It's like... Maybe a little more urgent than that. <laughs> but not quite a knock. It's hard to explain. <laughs> so I... Uh, you know what? I don't think I want to keep going straight back. I'm going to turn this way. So finally, I said, all right, something's going on. This sounds a little louder. And now, of course, you're playing these scenarios through in your mind. Like, what what could it be at this hour? It's 1 o'clock in the morning. And, the, you know, all my kids are in bed. So as a parent, you're thinking... All right, everybody's in bed, all right? Okay, no car accidents, nobody's out driving right now, nobody's out with friends, nobody's at school. Um, 
So you're thinking, okay, so it's not a cop knocking on the door with some bad news, which, well, we've had cops knock on the door. I have a 16-year-old son, so wouldn't be the first time, probably wouldn't be the last. But no, my son's in his bed asleep. What could it be? So I got up and I got dressed. Of course, first couple of times I'm thinking, you know what? What? It's nothing. Just stay in bed. It's nice and cozy and warm. But at this point, I'm like, I've got to go check this out. So first I went from worry, and this all happens really quickly. You know, you play these scenarios through your mind, like, what could it be? Could it be this, that, fire, neighbor, um, car, outside, broken down, something, someone getting murdered. <laughs> You know, all these little scenarios play through your mind. And as a parent, of course, you're thinking about your own kids and you're worried. And then the worry turns into like annoyance when you realize, no, my kids are fine. It's either a neighbor or, yeah, like I said, some car broke down or something. So now you just want to go, of course, curious, but you're also annoyed. Now I got to get up and get dressed. So I did. I got up and I got dressed and I went to check it out. So I creeped downstairs. You got to keep all the lights out. I actually looked out the window. I didn't see anybody by the door. I didn't see any cars in the roads. I live in a kind of a suburban area, and I know all the cars, and there were no cars I couldn't recognize. Um, so I kind of crept out. I went to my son's room, of course, and his door was closed. I opened it up to look in there, and the dog was not in there. And... Uh, so now I'm thinking, all right, well, let me just go check all the doors and make sure at least downstairs the dog's not stuck somewhere else. Well, as it turns out, it wasn't, there was nobody in the house. All the doors were locked. It wasn't the wind. I still didn't find the source of the sound at that point. All right, we need to make a turn here. So let's put these here, I think. And... I'm not going to do this turn over here. So anyway, go back to bed. Those guys? Yeah, okay. And uh, I just, well, you know, I'll just wait for it to happen again, and then I'll go back and try to figure out what it is. <laughs> so that's what I did. And sure enough, a few minutes later, it happened again. So now I'm like, what the heck? But that time, I figured out what it was. And I felt ridiculously foolish. But it turns out, it was a dehumidifier. My wife put a dehumidifier. Um, how am I going to do this? This is going to be weird, I think. No, that's not going to work. Um, she had a dehumidifier only for a couple of nights, so I wasn't really used to the sound. But that thing's cranking away, making all sorts of noise. And, uh, oops. Okay, now this is where things are going to get tricky. On an angle here. But I know I can do it. If I do... So anyway, it was the bubbles that this thing was bubbling up, right? Making all kinds of noise. Um, the bubbles were being released from the reservoir where the water is. You know, So there's, there's a water reservoir holding the water. And as this thing you know, cranks out... Uh, the mist, I guess, uh, you know, the water drops and little bubbles get released, and that's what was happening. So these bubbles were being released. Hmm. I'm going to have to get rid of these stairs, actually. So anyway, it felt kind of foolish, and what happened was it was the little bubbles that would rise to the surface and then pop at the top. And I want to go pop, 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 pop. And that wasn't the noise, though. The noise was actually when the popping created a little vibration in the on the dresser and then the dresser would like make a knock it was odd but it did sound like a rapping sound so that was my freaky night no ghosts no apocalypse just a humidifier and maybe put a fireplace here or something and i'll spruce it up i'm gonna make a room with uh with picture frames as like a, a memoir room in a hall of shame and hall of fame and I'm, i've got a plan for putting up like uh some item frames with different well the gifts that the guys have given me as well as keep track of all my deaths in the hall of on the wall of shame but i don't have nearly enough 
to do all that right now. So I'm going to have to go out and do some more collecting and uh, you know, crafting and so forth. But I think this is a good beginning of the Hobbit Hole. Let's take a little step back here and just look at the front. And I will spruce up the front, obviously, with some gardens. Hobbits like gardens. We'll have a little stone path out to the walk. And I'll need doors, too, of course. And then we'll, um, you know, we'll make it a little more cozy and homey over time. But that is going to have to suffice for now because I've got some chores to do. It's Friday, big shopping day. And uh, kids are going to be home shortly. And i got to get prepared for that. That's always a major event around here. Lots of noise. All right. We're going to eat up the pork chop. We're going to call it a day. And I hope you all enjoyed. And we'll see you next time. When we uh, Next time is going to be the holiday special. I'll have, I'll hope, I hope to have this hobbit hole done. And then I'm going to make up some gifts. And we'll go take a look at the gifts. There's a big tree over here somewhere. There's actually more than just more than one tree. There are some ho uh, Christmas trees. Yep, there's one there, and there's a bunch of gifts down there. So I think what we're going to do is on Christmas Day, I would imagine everyone's going to log in and take a look at their gifts. So I need to get some gifts put together. I don't want to be that guy. And I don't have much to give, but I'll come up with some kind of an idea. I believe I'm being stalked. I just heard somebody eat some food. And burp. I think it's McGollum. <laughs> anyway, I guess uh, let me just show you what I did here before I actually leave. I've kind of turned this into the turn. Oh, there he goes. Where he? Now he's back. I don't trust him. And I'm going to make this straight away. Instead of at an angle. So I will have the angle on this side, and then we'll turn and then go here. I might have to go one more over. But this is the solution I did. So it seems to look okay. I still have the the indentation here on most of it. And then I will do one more over. That should give us the three, and we'll go back that way. And I might make a big room in here. So I just thought I'd share that with you. Just because it looked like things weren't working out. It's hard to talk and build. <laughs> I'm not really accustomed to it. I'm not accustomed to building. So, I can't imagine I'd be very good at talking and building at the same time. But, yeah, if I have some time to think about things and think it through and then kind of look at it later, it seems to make more sense. It's a lot easier to do. Anyway, so... That's the solution. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's go over one more here, I think. I might even take this one out and go over again. So boom, 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 and then boom. Up. Oh, did you hear that? All right, either that's some kind of a sheep or something. He's doing the sneaksy thing. Let's go check it out. Where's my bow? Warning shot. I've got two arrows. Unless he's got some kind of invisibility. Ha! <laughs> McGollum! It's my precious! Here, what do I have for you? Have some stew, my friend. Sneaksy little bugger. Oh, fruit. I'm full. All right, well, that's the second time Mr. McGollum has snuck up on me and stalked me. I'm sure it won't be the last. I'll have to prepare myself with some kind of perimeter defense. All right, welcome back, guys and gals. I figured I might as well just show you the completed walls for the end of this video rather than uh, leave you hanging. So let's just go through... Um, I did have to go collect a, f a little bit more spruce pine, but as you can see, I've changed this angle. It turns here and then done, and I put a little bit of snow over here. I don't have any wool or shears to get the wool, but I did collect some snow and made some snow blocks, but that's what the ceiling will look like. It's going to be white. Uh, I may just continue using snow. Who knows? All right, so I think that's about it for the time being.
And I'm just going to take a little hobbit nap right now and maybe have a second or third breakfast. And I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.